Do you know who the butcher is? <laughs> Delay a bunch, I'm afraid. I'll eat this in five bites. Yo, what's poppin' everybody? Welcome back to the Film Archives. In today's episode, we'll be talking about M. Night Shyamalan's brand new thriller, Trap. Real trap shit. So grab yourself a snack, maybe a drink, prepare for a ton of spoilers, and let's get into it. So we're introduced to a father and a daughter. The father being played by Josh Harnett, who plays a firefighter named Cooper Abbott. And Josh Harnett is just he just doesn't age you know he's always going to be that 2000s heartthrob it's pretty incredible stuff and i will say that his acting performance completely carried this movie completely we're introduced to his daughter riley who looks like a young amy schumer and has the singing ability of a white mariah all my life i've been steady it's not good. so we see cooper take his daughter riley to a pop concert for a girl named lady raven Lady Raven is actually played by Salika Night Shyamalan. So this is M. Night Shyamalan's daughter. So, you know, just another opportunity for his kids to act in his films. It's great stuff. It's great stuff. Because I guess her being formally educated in classical piano from the University of Brown just wasn't good enough for her. Just wasn't good enough for her. She needed to get into movies too. As soon as Cooper and Riley arrive at the concert, Cooper notices that there's just an insane amount of police officers there which sparks his interest. That was kind of exciting. A bit later, he finds out from one of the t-shirt vendors, whose name is Jamie, that the FBI is actually there. And this is all just a plan to catch a serial killer that's on the loose, known as The Butcher. <laughs> so the entire concert is actually just one big trap. This whole concert, it's a trap. So the big twist is, it's a trap. No, it's not the big twist, but moving right along into the movie, it is revealed that Cooper himself, father to Riley, is actually the serial killer, The Butcher. We see him check his phone where he watches a live feed of his latest captured victim, whose name is Spencer. Very irrelevant stuff, but he's holding him captive inside a basement somewhere. Very scary. Josh Harnett, Cooper, makes friends with the t-shirt vendor, Jamie, and he eventually steals his ID card and learns a bunch of the inside, you know, like, information, like, uh, the password that will identify him as a worker. Hamilton. Now listening to the police radio that he recently stole, Cooper hears a woman, who is the FBI profiler, basically predict what he's going to do throughout the event, and, uh, you know, it's pretty irrelevant, boring stuff. But eventually Cooper sets off an explosion in a nearby food stand and it like wounds and maims one of the workers there, which I thought was kind of messed up, kind of messed up. He then goes out to the roof to see if he can make an escape where he is intercepted by SWAT snipers, but he is able to trick them into thinking that he is just an employee using the password that the t-shirt vendor had given him earlier. Police also tell him that there's a manhunt underway by the FBI profiler whose name is Dr. Josephine Grant and that she's caught already 10 different serial killers, so she ain't no joke. She ain't no joke. We see his daughter get a bit confused as to why her dad, Cooper, keeps leaving her from the concert, and, you know, she tells him that he's acting weird. But, of course, we all know he's acting weird because this fool trying to get up out of there, bro. He ain't trying to get caught. Like, sh hell no, bro. He trying to dip. You gotta be quicker than that, buddy. Unfortunately, he can't dip, even though there's 20,000 people in attendance, and 3,000 of them are grown men. You know, I guess the FBI is going to single him out and they're going to find him. Yeah, pretty stupid, I thought. Pretty stupid. I mean, I get it if it was like a thousand people, but there's 20,000 people at this event, 3,000 of which could possibly be the serial killer. But sure, we're going to believe that the FBI profiler is going to find them. Like, this is just, I don't know. It's such a stupid stupid plan bro you just blowing from stupid down we then see his daughter riley mention that she wants to be chosen to go up on stage with the pop singer lady raven m night Shyamalan's daughter who they call the dreamer girl she basically gets to dance on stage with a singer and she gets like free backstage access which is cool and of course cooper being the serial killer the butcher thinks that this could possibly mean that he has a way out and that there's an exit not covered by police we then see cooper approach the pop singer Lady Raven's uncle and lie to him, telling him that his daughter Riley recently recovered from leukemia, which basically, you know, he's playing the fake sympathy card so that way they choose Riley, his daughter, to be the dreamer girl. This was like the stupidest cameo ever by M. Night Shyamalan, who I guess plays 
the uncle of Lady Raven, but I mean, this is just her actual dad in real life. So I, I mean, it was just so cringe. I'm not gonna lie. This is the point where the movie starts to just <laughs> starts going downhill real fast, real fast. So his daughter gets picked to be the dreamer girl. She dances on stage with Lady Raven. It's a fun time. What is fun? As the concert ends, we see Cooper and his daughter Riley backstage. But of course, the backstage exit is also guarded by the police. So there ain't no getting up out of there, bro. It's at this point he decides to take Lady Raven aside and talk to her one-on-one. -on -one, and he reveals to Lady Raven that they're actually looking for him. That he is the serial killer, the butcher. I think you're looking for me. And he blackmails her and threatens her by saying that he's going to kill his latest victim, Spencer. He also shows Lady Raven his phone, saying that if she doesn't comply with what he wants, he'll send carbon monoxide in there to poison and kill him. And again, I will say that Josh Harnett does an incredible job playing a psychopath. Like, it's really good. And it's hard not to kind of, you know, root for this fool, but that's just me, bro. That's just me. So Cooper threatens Lady Raven, saying that if she doesn't take Riley and himself inside his limousine out of the concert, that he's gonna just freaking, he's just gonna freaking kill Spencer right there on the spot. And Lady Raven, you don't want that blood on your hands. You just don't want it, brother. You don't want it. It's pretty stupid. I'm not gonna lie. It's pretty stupid. Of course, Lady Raven is a super nice kid and complies, and she decides to let Cooper and Riley into their limousine, where she suddenly just, you know, is a big hero and says, you know what, let me drive you all the way to your house and drop you off there. And I'm not gonna lie, Salika Shyamalan, Lady Raven, she's a terrible actress. Like, what are you doing? What are you doing? We then see Lady Raven arrive at Cooper's house where she stalls for time, explaining that the FBI were actually looking for the serial killer to Cooper's family, which is, bruh, you shouldn't be doing that. You shouldn't be doing that. Like, you're playing with this serial killer, bro. Like, you're supposed to be like a young, you know, little pop star and you're playing with this fool. Like, get out of here, bro. Get out, who do you think you are? She then even explains that the FBI profiler was describing the serial killer as someone who is obsessive and has extreme OCD and has some pretty severe and internal deep mother issues. It's not good. Been practicing for years. She also explains the details that the police uncovered that the serial killer, the butcher, actually purchased tickets to her concert and that the receipt was left in one of his vacant houses, which was reported anonymously. We'll find out who reported this later. Lady Raven then decides to play a little songy poo on the piano inside Cooper's house, where she decides, you know what, let me take a selfie with Riley. Of course, this is all just a ploy to actually steal Cooper and Riley's phone, where she then just walks away and locks herself in the bathroom. Also, the killer, Josh Harnett, you know, Cooper, this dude's like 6'3 and a firefighter. Like, I feel like if he wanted to break down the door and was actually, you know, like a psychopath serial killer, he probably would have just broken down the door. But what do I know? I'm not a psycho. You know what I'm saying? Lady Raven then pulls out Josh's phone, completely bypassing the passcode, which is really stupid. And she pulls up the live feed of his latest victim, our boy Spencer, who was locked in the basement somewhere. She then is able to communicate with Spencer, getting small details about where he is being held, and then pulls out her own phone and live streams, revealing the details of his location. And of course, you know, her viewers just magically know where this guy is, and they go to the house and they rescue him. It's really stupid. It's at this point Lady Raven tells Cooper's family that he's the serial killer, the butcher. Cooper is the butcher! That's terrible. Lady Raven then sends a text to her limo driver saying that she needs to call the police. So at this point, Cooper finally opens the door and takes Lady Raven hostage. He then attempts to drive off with her, but Cooper's family shows up in the driveway blocking his way out and distracts him lo just long enough for Lady Raven to flee into her limousine nearby. It's so stupid. The police arrive and they attempt to arrest Cooper inside his house, but we find out that he's actually already left the house through a secret tunnel that he had. Secret tunnels. Secret tunnels. It's insane. It's insane. Having escaped, he then incapacitates one of the nearby SWAT members in the neighbor's house and uses his uniform as a disguise to escape by driving off in the limousine with Lady Raven. So he just walks right through all the FBI agents and the SWAT and 
you know, commandeers the limo, I guess. They never even mention what happens to the limo driver, like, at all. So we don't know. We don't know. After he turns around and reveals that he's driving the limousine to Lady Raven, she is able to unlock the window, because I guess this guy's never heard of, you know, freaking window locks. And, uh, you know, she screams for help into the mob and uh, into her, like, her nearby fans. And, of course, her fans just, like, crowd the limo and prevent him from leaving, which is so stupid. So stupid. As this happens, the FBI catches up to the limousine and learns that Cooper is driving it and has taken Lady Raven hostage. So they attempt to arrest him again. However, he has already taken off the SWAT uniform and propped it up in the seat and has made his escape into the nearby crowd. Yeah, so this guy's kind of like a master of blending in and just, you know, manipulating people. Which, which again, is just a testament to Josh Harnett's acting. Like, if you're watching this, Josh, please be my friend. Please follow me, Josh. Please. I'm here for you, sir. I remember watching The Faculty when I was just a wee little guy. Please be my friend. We then see Cooper just return to his house, which... I thought was extremely stupid, like the SWAT clearly just raided your house in an attempt to arrest you and, you know, within a mere matter of hours of escaping, that's the first place you return to. It's just so obvious that M. Night Shyamalan wrote this movie in five months, like, bro, take your time and actually write something worth f while, okay? Like, quit wasting everybody's time. Stupid. Just because you had a few bangers in the early 2000s doesn't mean you get a free pass, brother. It doesn't mean that. Stupid. Anyway, Cooper having returned to his house, you know, I guess it's not a crime scene. It's fine. You know, I guess it's not a trap. It's definitely a trap. But, you know, he just waltzes up in there and he confronts his wife, whose name is Rachel, that, you know what, somebody had to have ratted him out. There's no way they would have found his safe house that easily. And, of course, who was the person who called in the anonymous tip? His wife, Rachel. Bro, let me tell you something. That is some shady bullshit. I mean, I thought she was supposed to be his ride or die. You know what I mean? Like Cooper, being super mad at his wife, decides, you know what? I'm going to hack you up with a big cleaver. He's going to kill her, and then he's going to take his own life. Kind of a murder suicide type situation, you know? However, his wife, Rachel, convinces him to finish the pie that she cooked in order to celebrate Riley's good report card grades, which... It's so stupid, bro. Like, you're here to kill your wife. Like, you're risking your freedom. You came back, and, you know, you're, like, super angry at your wife for ratting you out. And you're like, sure, let me have one last piece of pie with you. Like, anyway, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. So he eats the pie in five bites. And at the very end of it, he realizes that his wife has actually drugged him with the same sedative drugs that he has in his serial killer bag. You know, every serial killer has a tool bag, you know, he needs his tools, he needs his things. Tools, duct tape, zip ties, and gloves, I have to have my tools. This causes him to start tripping out and he thinks that he's seeing his mother, but we find out that this is not a hallucination. This is actually Dr. Josephine Grant, the FBI profiler, who is inside his home. As soon as we find out that it's Dr. Josephine Grant and that his wife has drugged him and tricked him into a sort of a trap. <laughs> see what I did there? Yeah, so basically it was a trap again. We see a few SWAT members actually tase him with tasers, which I thought was weird. Like this guy's already killed 11, 12 people, hacked him up into bits, but I guess we're gonna tase this fool and incapacitate him and arrest him, I guess. The one part of violence that we do see is Cooper just kind of swells with rage and he manages to fight through the pain of the tasers and he tackles one of the nearby SWAT officers, gouging his eyes out with his thumbs. But they just tase him again and the FBI profiler, she also has her own taser, so she tases him and this fool just gets freaking electrocuted up the butt, dude. It's crazy. It's crazy. We then see him being led away and being arrested. However, he convinces the police to let him make a quick stop so he can pick up his son's bike and adjust it. You know, kind of an OCD thing. Or is it? It's not. It's not at all. It's not at all. So we see him being arrested and taken away in the police van. And as it drives away, we see that Cooper... This is the big M. Night Shyamalan twist. Are you guys ready for this? We see that the killer, Cooper, actually took a spoke out of the tire of the bicycle which he then uses to lockpick his handcuffs and chains 
and free himself. And then he just laughs maniacally and then fades to black. Shamalan, Shamalan, Shamalan. The movie ends. The movie ends. So, was Trap worth watching? I mean, it started off strong. Like I said, it was entertaining right away and, you know, kind of really like kept you invested for the first hour or so. But uh, I'm not gonna lie, it quickly fell off, and once it started falling off, it just went from bad to worse, and the ending just had so many plot holes and so many inconsistencies that overall, I actually left extremely disappointed. Like, I thought it was a huge waste of time, and I'll be honest, I think you could probably have more fun, you know, doing literally anything other than watching this movie. Like, unless you're a diehard Shyamalan fan, I would just entirely skip this movie. Like it was, it wasn't worth it. Like it's obvious that this was just a movie that M Night Shyamalan created, so that way he could have his daughters act and you know participate in his films once again. So nothing special here. And the big twist was what he took a spoke out of the bicycle tire and was able to free himself while he's inside a police van being escorted to the prison or the jail. Like. What a twist, what a twist, or what What was the other twist? Maybe that the entire thing was a trap, even though we know this before we even go into the movie. Like, I don't know, I just, I was super let down by this movie. I did not like it. But what were your thoughts on Trap if you've seen it? Drop your thoughts and your opinions in the comments below and let me know. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any new videos. I upload new videos just like this every single week. Thank you all so much for watching. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. Much love to you all, and I will see you in the next one. Bye! It's a trap movie. This is real trap shit. It's a trap movie coming at you like it's a motherfucking crap movie. Because it is. It's dog shit. You don't even want to know what it is. Step back, get back, don't watch this movie.